Good afternoon. Today's demonstration is going to be on creating a protection plan. And we're going to start with going to devices. And we'll grab a machine and we'll choose our workstation three here. Now, as you notice, when I highlight it on the right, it's going to pop up all these options. And to do a backup plan, we're going to hit protect. And these are particular plans that are on there already uh, that we're doing in our testing. We're going to go back from to start from scratch here and do add a plan. These are templates that have been created over the course of time where you can reuse these over and over and export them import if you want. But once again, we're gonna just go to create plan, hit protection. And here's all your options for the backup as well as the other things we offer. One agent, one console, you can go into everything you wanna do from a single protection plan. So we're gonna do out of the entire machine, disk and volume or file or folder. The difference, entire machines is gonna back up everything inside of that particular machine, all the drives, uh, if you want to do like an external drive USB, you'd want to do the disk and volume because that way you can actually choose it a la carte uh, to do that. So with the disk and volume, you can also say, I just want to back up the E drive and not the operating system. So it gives you more flexibility, more granularity in that respect. You can also back up files and folders for sure. Uh, one of the benefits though of doing the entire machine or disk and volume, uh, you can restore an image at two o'clock uh, with the entire machine uh, image. You can also restore a PDF an hour earlier, so this with the same image, so it automatically mounts it up for you. So we're going to do entire machine for our purposes today. As you notice, anything with a green circle with a white arrow means it's part of the advanced packs. They're very, very good. Uh, and this in particular is going to be what, we, what I call the backup between the snapshots, continuous data protection. And when you turn that on, it's going to allow you to back up uh, and keep track of the latest delta of certain applications as well as certain files if you want to make it very efficient uh, and bandwidth friendly and, and resource friendly as well. Now. Uh, where you can back it up, we can for sure go to uh, SAN, NAS, or DAS locally, anything basically with a um, drive letter, UNC path IP address. Uh, you can do a secure zone where you back it up to the same machine under on a different partition uh, defined by scripts, as well as now we have public cloud availability with the advanced back member, green circle with a white arrow, Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, and Wasabi availability, which is great. And for our purposes, we're going to just grab a local storage spot here. And once that's uh, picked up, we could call it a day, just hit create. We've got a nice local backup, we're, we're done. Uh, but the other option obviously is to say, I wanna back it up to the local environment, do a full image of the image, the disk and volumes or the files and folders. And then when that's done, I wanna add a location. This is gonna add the location that you chose when you created the tenant itself. So we're gonna add the location. So what'll happen now, it's gonna take that entire machine, back up the entire image to that local storage. Then it's gonna replicate it to that cloud storage you picked when you created the tenant. Uh, and then you can decide in terms of the scheduling, how often you want it to be uh, backed up. It could be every, you know, incremental, every every hour, every day, uh, every week, that kind of thing. And you can also say between certain times of the week, you can start at a certain time. You also have some more granular options down here to say, hey, I want to do, the machine is uh, turned off. I want to run that task when it comes back online or attempt to start that. So a lot of options in terms of granularity for there. Uh, you also have the ability to say, we're going to do in snapshots every hour. We want to keep the last 90. That if you do an hourly snapshot, it'll keep the last 90 hours. If you're doing a um, daily, it'll keep all the 90 days. So you can also get into backup by age. And this gives you a little more granularity. You're going to have 30 uh, days, 12 weeks, 12 months. You can bump that up or down as needed. You may want to keep it for longer purposes, for legal reasons or what have you. You can also drop this down to say, I just want to keep the last you know, three days in particular. And if you do hourly, you can bring it down to keep the last 24 hours, the last 48 hours as well. Now, once you've got the frequency and the how often you want them to be taken out of the mix to save storage space, uh, you can set your encryption. The encryption is going to be everything from 128, 192 to 256. You want to put in a password. Now, this is very serious. We do not store the password anywhere. We don't cache it anywhere. So you want to make sure you hang on to that so you can get back into your backups as needed. So very serious note with that. Um, with the application aware, we can do SQL exchange active directory. This allows you to, uh, do a SQL database by itself, restore individual files and folders, uh, tables, things like that, as well as individual databases from exchange and individual emails. You can even restore an active directory into a, uh, domain forest where it will not affect the synchronization of all the other domains, as well as Oracle DBs and cPanel for web hosting and things like that. Now. We also have some backup options, which are great. Everything from uh, compression up to about 30, 40% on maximum if it's compressible data. 
uh, save you storage space, save money for the customers, as well as uh, we do performance. This will allow you to say during a period of time, I want to keep everything blue. So during the day, everything will be low, low output, low CPU. And at night, then it's basically, you know, take off the blinders and it's ready to go as fast as it wants. You also have the option to say, hey, I'm going to be working on these machines right now. I want to make everything stop during this period of time, during this gray area. And then it'll, when it gets back to the green or the blue, it'll start it up again. So a lot of neat stuff here, pre and post commands if you're using non-SQL type things, and it goes many, many other possibilities in here we can get into if you want to go on a, a deeper dive uh, later on, just let us know. Now, um, in terms of the other features, well, I'll get kind of a little bit into this. Disaster recovery, you can back up any Windows server, Linux server to the Acronis cloud and utilize it for disaster recovery. It's extremely, very well set up, very well done. Uh, you can do it for testing of the machines uh, in, turn, in the console here. You can have automated test failovers that occur every 30 days. So you can basically have insurance plan to know that these machines are going to boot up if they really need to, uh, which is very comforting to yourself as well as the customers. We now have uh, the EDR here, which is on top of the antivirus, anti-malware. We have a thing called the Cyber Protect Operations Center, and it's extremely well done. The idea is that it keeps track of all the latest Windows, third-party updates, security patches, things like that, as well as all the virus, malware, ransomwares that are out there, even weather conditions in your area. So it's going to focus that into your console, so you're going to be able to utilize that when you're running your uh, ransomware detection, the antivirus, anti-malware, and this EDR uh, benefits in better ways than most particular, uh, most uh, regular EDRs because it offers all the abilities of our console in addition to that. The idea is you can do patch management, you can restore a system locally, you can create a disaster recovery machine, and you can fix it all with one click. Uh, the other great thing about EDR is it's going to tell you, here's what happened during the, the attack and the flow chart in layman's terms. So you can kind of look through there and see where it's, what it's trying to, what it was trying to accomplish, how it started, uh, and then be able to do that one click remediation, which is great. And we can go a lot deeper into that if you want. It's very easy to set up, but we can work with you on that too. Uh, URL filtering is going to filter out the URLs that you do not want people to go to. Uh, we also can piggyback on Defender Antivirus and, and Windows Firewall. If you want, if you're using our antivirus anti-malware, you can turn that off as well, no problem. And once again, everything with a green circle with a white arrow means that it is uh, part of the advance pack. So, And you can talk to your sales folks about that. We also have vulnerability assessment, which is included. This will check once again with that Cyber Protect Operations Center and say, hey, this Windows update's available, this Adobe update's available. Uh, a lot of these machines, when they're out there, they're not updated properly. They can be very vulnerable to hackers. So it's a nice way to make sure that you're going to check with our CPOC. Uh, it's going to check automatically, tell you what's available. Uh, and then you have the option to use the advanced pack, which will automatically install these updates onto your system. So uh, keeps everything up to date current, gives the hackers the least amount of possibility of getting into your system. Also, another great feature of the patch management is you can set up an incremental a backup before you actually put in the patches. So if something goes sideways, you have the ability to revert back to before that happens. So you make everything good again. So if you have data protection map, it'll keep track of, uh, if you have your backing up a, a folder full of PDFs, you can have it scan the entire volume and make sure there's no other PDFs on the drive. If there are and you want to back them up, you can back those up. So you also have device control, Wi-Fi, USB printers, things like that. You can keep those out hardware wise. Uh, and then data loss prevention is the software type version. That is going to allow you to make sure you keep uh, credit card information, publicly identifiable information, proprietary information, keep that inside of a system and let, not allow it to get out of the, uh, of, the, of the organization. So not go out to Skype or to somebody's email address. It's going gonna, it's gonna to limit that and stop that uh, from getting out. So that's something we get a deeper dive on as well. Uh, and then once you do that, you just want to hit create and you've created your plan. Now, obviously, we've got a lot more stuff we can talk about, but that is the focus for today, and hope everyone has a great rest of the day.